Annie. Amazing audience, we are live uh, again. It's our third uh, conversation on the Red Rocks. It is a beautiful morning, uh, and these guys are coming through, and they're all dressed beautifully as well. Uh, they're all doing the purple today, <laughs> which is super cool. Uh, we now have with us Nick Reezy. Now, do you do the Z as S? Like Rizzi sometimes, or do you do Rizzi? It's, I try and keep it Rizzi, but it was all lost at Ellis Island when my family came over anyway, so <laughs> it's whatever people say that day. <laughs> I would say, though, that's a really cool statement, though. Like, hey, I'm Nick, I keep it Rizzi. Like, that, that just sounded really cool. I try to keep it Rizzi, you know? Let's verb it. I love it! <laughs> <laughs> So tell me, Nick, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time in history? Yeah, absolutely. I like to consider myself a bit of a, a power networker, and I built a my passion and, and hoping to build my business around networking. I graduated with 13 job offers, and I had 40, 30-plus interviews when I was graduating college. And I just love meeting new people, and I, I want to teach that. Like, how do you do that, I mean, I think there are a ton of people that would like to know the answer to that. How do you graduate yeah. and have job offers? That is probably a slightly longer answer than 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the short answer is a lot of rejection and a lot of putting yourself out there. Yeah. And the biggest thing that I did is, is I, especially my senior year, I spent $583.17 on coffee. Uh, as a broke college student when I was eating ramen. <laughs> but I took out as many professionals as I could. Anyone I interacted with, I took them out for coffee or lunch mm -hmm. and just asked, how, how can I grow up to be like you? And now those you said $583.17, yeah. right? Yes, sir. Uh, where did you learn that from the ability of accountability? Has to be yeah. you being accountable all the while, right? I'd love to say it's me being accountable. It was more just figuring out where my next meal is going to come from at the time. <laughs> no, a lot of it was I love, <laughs> uh, I really like money. And so yeah. <laughs> watching my bank account drain like that, it, it kind of helped me gain a sense of purpose where instead of I was just swiping my card and the money was going, I was saying, hey, this is 12 more dollars towards graduating with a job. This is an additional 1117 towards me making a connection that's going to earn me back triple, quadruple, hopefully hundreds of dollars that's more amazing. than 11. <laughs> so this is at what age you're thinking like this? I started probably about 19, about when I was coming into school. I, I was lucky enough to, my first set of friends were all older mm. and great influencers and great motivations yeah. for for building that so it probably started around 19 uh, the beginning of college but I, I got really serious about it when I was 20 and I, I'm in a business fraternity which um, Paul is also in actually called Delta Sigma Pi and my my big is was one of my closest friends and he was getting ready to graduate he was two years older than me and he said Nick or I said uh, Mike are you excited to go are you excited to, to start the real world? Yeah. And, and Mike looked at me and he's like, no, I, I have no offers. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm in debt. And he was scared. And I decided then and there that I didn't want to be a part of that. So I was yeah. going to start working then to make sure I wasn't. That's intriguing. Yeah. Wow. A little scary. <laughs> well, for that age, being that insightful, I think that's uh, pretty amazing. I mean, well done. Uh, so it did work, right? It worked. I, I was very happy. I ended up getting my first offer came before I even started my senior year. And it was an incredible job at Target. But I uh, kept going because I, I think I would have loved the job, but it wasn't quite where my heart was. And, and it went from graduating with a job to with a job that I wanted to do, that I was right. excited about. Right. And I, I kept going until I ended up actually networking my way. It, it wasn't even so much of an interview as much as it was a trade <laughs> um, into a job with a startup. Oh, really? Yes, sir. So how did that look like? What did that look like? Like you're setting up a startup and they say, okay, we need to have you employed as this person? A little bit. So I had this job at Target and I have always had a passion for small business. That's, I went to the University of Denver. Part of the reason I, I came from Iowa to Colorado was because I wanted to be close to Boulder, which was at the time the fastest growing city for entrepreneurship. So I, I knew I wanted to own my own business and that's what I was working towards. And I ended up getting this offer at Target 
and I had a, a pretty close network of friends and, and some of my friends I was helping, I guess at the time I didn't realize it, but now, now I know it's coaching <laughs> so that they could graduate <laughs> with jobs too. And one of these friends interviewed with a company called Picos with uh, a gentleman named Hart Williams and she interviewed and <laughs> at the end of the interview, she, she, he said, did you have any questions? And she says, uh, actually, I had an amazing time today, but I really don't think I'm a good fit for this job. I think you need to talk to my friend, Nick Rizzi. Wow. <laughs> so she said that in her interview. She put me in contact with him. We got coffee. He ended up offering me a job as I was the second employee at Picos, which then merged into my full time. And with Chandler, with the girl who introduced me to Picos, she took my job at Target. So the job offer that I had. So I burned no bridges. I made sure my position was filled. <laughs> wow, well done. Yeah, worked out real nicely. <laughs> yeah. I usually think that uh, high fives could be cheesy sometimes, but I mean like... <laughs> yeah, I'm in for that. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. I love that. Wow. So, all right. So what's one other thing you've done consistently over the last three years? That is such a hard question because I feel like I've even been going through more changes these last three years. Mm. I think the biggest thing that I've kept consistent is around networking. Uh, it's, it's, that's something I'm very passionate about because it's, it's not taught. Nobody tells you what to do. Everybody just says you have to go network. Yeah. And nobody has laid out the steps, which is what I'm, I'm aiming to build my, my passion around to help people lay out those steps. So I think if there's anything consistent that I'm proud of that I've done, it's I've, I've kept up my coffee trend. I've probably spent over $3,000 now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's four years later. Yeah. Yeah. Course, yeah. But it's worth it. Every speaker I encounter, every uh, friends uh, that I, I want in my network as, as part of my five, as part of my 12 that are going places, <laughs> there I always try and meet up at least once yeah. every other month. That's fun. Uh, I was listening to John Maxwell recently and he was talking about a uh, $699 investment he did in personal development that is worth millions now. It would be really fun to see what the 583, 383, $583.17 turned into, right? Yeah. In a book, I'm just saying. <sighs> I like $3, that. dollars what that has turned into. Yeah, it would really be fun to see that connected. For me, like, yeah. I would buy it. Yeah, that's a neat idea. Yeah. Like, please sell me the first copy if, 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 when you do it, right? Like, <laughs> okay. please. I really love that. Yeah. Going in the book. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> All right, so you're doing this. How does it make you feel being that guy uh, that has done networking on this level and seen the, the, the turnaround? I would love to say good. I feel good about myself. I'm confident in myself. Yeah. But I... I feel like there's so much more like even the degree of everything that I've done now I'm I'm not close I'm not done I'm not <laughs> I'm not at the end by any means and so I feel very strongly like like there's more like I can continue and in a lot of ways I'm fr working through frustrations because I'd rather help other people do this too and there's there's a lot of blockades and doing that there's a lot of roadblocks to, yeah. <laughs> to get you on that path but who's better than you though who's better than me oh i mean like man you've done it i probably you've done no, yeah i've done it man, probably did, no one just, he just told us he did it that's though. true yeah so <laughs> i'm not going back on that <laughs> i'm wondering right so you've done it so i mean who's better no that's, there's no one you're right there's no one better you don't need to read a book to tell us how to do what you did yeah that's you true are the book and I think one of my, my friends and mentors, uh, Anastasia Button, actually, she's amazing. amazing. Check her out. <laughs> but she, she helped put me on a path that realized that at the moment I'm, I'm my own biggest roadblock. Mm. And there is no one better than me to do this. But that's cool, though. That means you just need to get out of your own way. So it's fun. Yeah. So you're good. So the book comes out soon, right? Yes, sir. It's on a, a pretty aggressive schedule. It's releasing in the, the winter right. if everything goes according to plan. And then the, the big piece that I'm, I'm very passionate about that is the book is going to be a condensed overview of, of how to network, teaching you the things they don't teach you in school. And so you can graduate with a job as well. And we'll be releasing a course system after that that, that we're accepting idea. alpha clients What's for. What's the name of the book? Not named as yet? That's not cool. named yet. Right now it's the art of millennial networking. Yeah. But I'm I'm not stuck on it, especially now that iGen is entering college and, and they need the information just as yeah. much. It's not limited. Can I offer one suggestion? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's keep it easy.
Let's keep it Rizzy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's growing on me. <laughs> All right, let's switch gears for a moment. Let me invite you now into my time machine. Okay. It's surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Ooh, I like this already. What is your earliest childhood memory? Oh, wow. I think one of my earliest childhood memories is in, I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah. Right. And I remember very well, uh, we had a, a bit of a mini forest that backed up against our house. And to me, the snow was hundreds of feet tall. And I just remember monstrous deer and quail eating my mom's flowers oh, really? <laughs> right outside. I was probably four. Why do you think that memory is so clear? I think it was, it was just cool. It was the first time. We didn't have pets at that time. I didn't get pets till I was quite a bit older. And I love animals. And that was my first interaction up close. It was literally glass separating my, me and a deer. A deer hell-bent on eating my mom's flowers. Well, she, <laughs> she cried silently. <laughs> but I, I think it was just my, my first introduction to wildlife, to animals, to seeing that. So there was like a glass blocking. Yeah, it was just our, it was our back door. And the snow had come up. You couldn't see footprints. We hadn't gone out in the winter because it had snowed so much and, yeah. and it was just right there and there was a family behind it too uh your wife and i were looking at all the deer here in red rocks too we yeah. got really excited i saw you guys they were kind of like pointing i was like oh what are they looking at you know what i wanted to keep for <laughs> well, that's intriguing can you connect that memory to who you are today wow this is a great session to dive into <laughs> Yeah, I, I think in a lot of ways, I growing up was very interesting because I was always very definitive in what I wanted. So I wanted to be a vet, and then I wanted to be a chef, and then I wanted to own my own business. And it's every turn, it was not a change of mind, it was clarity. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that, it, how, how that connects is that I decided that with animals, I've, I've always loved animals. And we, we now have cats and dogs and yeah. uh, I want more and I, I love <laughs> helping uh, and all of that. So I've, I've always been a big fan of animals. But every turn that I took, my, my parents were incredibly supportive of that and it, it all helped me gain clarity. And so when I did, no longer wanted to be a vet, it wasn't because I didn't want to be a vet. It's because I wanted to not I, I wanted to spend the quality time with them to provide them a, a good life mm. but I didn't want to do the hard things I it would break my heart to do the surgeries and to see them pass more and more so I didn't want to take on that piece I knew where my focus for that passion was and same thing with the chef I, I didn't want to do it day to day I wanted to do it for my significant other and for myself mm. and so it was I, I think that memory is probably pretty key because the, I, the deer was great, the, how close it was right behind the glass. But I think kind of the underlying, now, now that I'm thinking about it, the underlying message that I took away is that my, my, my mother was literally crying <laughs> because the flowers that she worked so hard to plant were being eaten by this family. And they, she just said they needed the food. So yeah. <laughs> she let them do it. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Whew, can I open interpretation? To the Absolutely. It in my mind. Uh, so... So we're going deep here, folks. But the concept. <laughs> <laughs> so the concept of the decisions that you make are based on what you believe can occur. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I need to get out of my own way, right? Earlier on in the conversation, like having that glass ceiling, but then having the door. And even though you can open the door, still being blocked from what you could touch mm -hmm. or access. For me that represents or can represent metaphorically you are uh, creating these scenarios where you can just see the thing but it's like I would say it's time to make the step and like, go get the thing and have the thing that's deep yeah. <laughs> so it's yours I think you're right I, I think you're right right now I have the tools I have the knowledge I'm, I'm helping I've gotten college students jobs i've worked with my friends to do this i just yeah. i need to get out of my own way and do it yeah and <laughs> i mean it's just you know it's like like thinking about your mother's pain is important and even the animals however one of the things that would help you or could help you get past those thoughts are two things one 
uh, the pain you would have to live through, and secondly, the joy that you that the person you are helping would get from what you're doing. Hmm. So it's just like two things, and you just let that be your compass. I like that. Yeah. That's brilliant. I love it. Yeah, amazing stuff. Wow. You're going to be a very, very big entrepreneur, my friend. <laughs> I, I hope so. That's the plan. My full-time job is, is helping to build a startup which still. Is the, which is best. It's the most important. It's good. Yeah. As long as I'm learning. Every single day, as long as I learn something new, then I'm happy. All right. If we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? <sighs> I just got into the whole Green Day, Panic at the Disco area. Right. Probably I Write Sins by Panic at the Disco. Right. Still my favorite song. That didn't change. All right, cool. Cool. <laughs> Love it. All right, my friend, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. Ready for this? Okay. Boom. Are you or have you passed on your skills? Have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? A single individual? No. Are you married? Not yet. Do you have children? Not yet. Do you believe in God? Uh, in a way. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Absolutely. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Wait, say that again? How about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time, the phone, and or the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Much more than eight. All right. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, Nick, a statement that represents who you are, Nick Greasy, what would you say that is? I am the Millennial Networker, and I want to help you get a job. Love it. Love it. Nick, this has been a great pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Hey, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate your time and having me out. Uh, I would love if you wanted to go check out nickrizzi.com. That's www.nickrizzi.com. You can get on the wait list for the book, and uh, I'd love to have you out as an alpha for the course. Boom, Nick Rizzi, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you have fun? That was awesome. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>